And welcome everybody to the ninth annual NFL Honors. This is a big one. We're celebrating 100 years. Thank you. Thank you. Now let me give you something to clap for. You look good tonight. Y'all look good, boy. Fellas, the NFL is dripping with it tonight. Y'all got y'all fly. You been what? You got the bodies though. Y'all's bodies, y'all specimens of human beings. I, and then the biggest night of y'all's life, if you ain't in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and you done covered your bodies up with clothes. Y'all lucky I ain't got your body, because I tell you right now, I be out here ass naked <laughs> with baby oil on and a rose in my mouth, and I wouldn't give a damn how uncomfortable you was looking at me. I, uh, I'm back. This is my second year. I'm from Cleveland. I told y'all that. And that's a big deal for a Cleveland boy to make it back twice, because unlike Cleveland coaches, they don't normally make it to a second season. <laughs> I'm from Cleveland. I can do this. I can do all these Cleveland jokes is mine. I've been in Cleveland my whole life. We're going to be something one day. Jarvis, don't leave us. Odell, don't leave us. Just stay with the Browns. Get me to the promised land one day. In Jesus' name. Let <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all, this is the 100th anniversary of the NFL. That's big. This is also 100 years of making people miss church. <laughs> Y'all had to put these games on Sundays, huh? Y'all couldn't have thought of another day? Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday. <laughs> you, ever, you ever sit in the drive through line on Sunday and forgot Chick-fil-A was closed and been sitting there? I just did that. I'm getting to the good stuff. Just come on, stay with me. I'm going to cover a couple of things for you all tonight, and I think we need to address it because it's the big topic in the NFL. It's racial diversity. <laughs> racial diversity is the big topic in the NFL today. You might not want to clap for it, but we're going to cover it. Look, I know y'all trying. I know you're trying to do better, but Uncle Steve has actually come up with a solution for racial diversity. See, we've been approaching this problem the wrong way. See, if you want to negotiate with billionaires, you have to give them something. See, we've been trying to, we've been just wanting something. We got to give. Negotiation is give and get. All y'all in here good at it. You negotiate your contracts. You got your agents. You know how to negotiate. We have to negotiate for racial diversity in all positions. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, you clapping now. I've been thinking about this. We've been fighting for black coaches. So I figure let's give up something. So here's what we are willing to do. I'm speaking on behalf of the black population in the NFL. They didn't ask me to, but damn it, I'm here, so here it is. I, I didn't run this by nobody. It's just something I came up with. If you give us one black coach, just one, we gonna give y'all two white cornerbacks. <laughs> you ain't got none. Where they at? Don't you want some white cornerbacks? We want a black coach. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to be fair. You do not, I do not recommend putting them on the same team. <laughs> All right, let's go. We're negotiating racial diversity in NFL. I have another one. 
you give us one black kicker and holder. Because <laughs> I've never seen that. I've been watching football my whole damn life. I've never seen a black kicker and holder. I, we want the combination. If you give us one black kicker and one black holder, we gonna give y'all two white punt returners. <laughs> Cause where they at? Who volunteers to be a punt returner? Do you know how crazy you got to be to return punts? You back here. The ball is in the air. It's up there four seconds. You got a field full of people who can get down here in four seconds. <laughs> they are the most pissed off people in all of football because they don't get to play. They on special teams. <laughs> now here they come. Here they come and your ass is waiting. They mamas is in the stands. Pookie told him there never wasn't gonna be nothing. He in the stands. Everybody waiting. This is not the job. We need more white punt returns. <laughs> Total diversity in the NFL. Now, this is the big one. I need your undivided attention. We want you to give us one black owner, just one. We want one black owner. If you give us that, we gonna give you a all white football team. <laughs> Everybody white, the kicker white, linebackers white, cornerbacks, running backs, everybody white. The uniform's gonna be white, all white. We ain't putting a stripe on it, no colors, nothing. White, the home uniform, white. The away uniform, white, snow white. And we're gonna give you a catchy name too. We're gonna call you the Miracle Whips. The Montana Miracle Whips. <laughs> I'm just trying to help y'all with racial diversity because y'all can't seem to pull it together. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. I think football players, to me, personally, greatest athletes in the planet. All of y'all can play basketball. They talk about basketball players, greatest athletes. No, they not. LeBron James would have made a great tight end yeah, until he caught a ball. <laughs> oh, he big. But once you come across the middle, Ed Reed is over there somewhere. <laughs> there are people like Ronnie Lott, is somebody over there. They're not the greatest foot athletes in the world, football players. Y'all can dunk. You're the greatest gladiators. But when you get a flag, y'all turn into the biggest sissies. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Look, we got this to replay now. We saw the penalty. You can't act like you ain't did nothing. We got it in slow motion. You a cornerback. You been holding that wide receiver like he's a war veteran returning home for the holidays. And then you... But the penalty that disturbs me the most is the false start. Now I want to tell, where's Roger? Mr. Goodell, we need to speed the game up. So we need to stop some of these trivial penalties. And I think false start is the dumbest penalty in the world. Here is a lineman who comes out of the huddle, 6'6", 300. He lines up. 
He gets in a three-point stance. Over on the other side is a group of hateful people. <laughs> Defensive players are evil. They're negative people. They don't want to give anything. Lawrence Taylor is over there. And soon as he thinks the ball gets snapped, all this poor kid does is, he just does that. <laughs> and just this, this, that, and then everybody, he did it, he did it, he did it. <laughs> Listen to me. You have got to allow these people to flinch. It's just a little bit. He just did that. Now listen, it's actually a clinch. It's actually <laughs> the center, dead center. He's clinching it. He's just shutting it because he knows what's coming. So he locked it, flop. Just shut it, flop. In medical terms, he's locking his anus. <laughs> that little thing called a speakster. I've never seen it. Well, yes, I have. So he's trying to clinch to stop it from happening. If he doesn't clinch, we slow the game down. Because what does he do? If he don't clinch, what's the opposite of clinch? He lets loose. Now we got to clean, we don't even know where the 30-yard line is now. <laughs> Three free clinches per game, per player. Give these poor defensive tackles a chance. This is somebody's son <laughs> playing football professionally. And you should be able to scream too. I left that out. You should be able to just go, ah! just a little bit. I know it's a punk ass move, but just a little bit. Ah! Just. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody. Welcome to the ninth annual NFL Honors. Give it up. <laughs>